So if anybody's looking to buy an international 66 series or 86 series, I figured I'd make a video here and offer some advice. Um, any tractor can break, anything can go wrong at any time with any make, model, color, or anything like that. Um, but some tractors have common issues. I'll get into it. the common issues with the 66 series and 86 series tractors. All right, guys, I apologize for the terrible lighting. It's another early morning here on the farm. The sun isn't out yet, and it's going to be a couple hours till it is because it's uh, cloudy and raining here again. Um, anyway, let's get into some of the common issues uh, that I've found over 10 years of working on some of this stuff. Uh, some of the common things that goes wrong, that goes, uh, wrong with uh, the 66 series and 86 series tractors. Now, first of all, I want to clear up a few things as far as the tractors themselves. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there that I've heard and I've seen over the years. Um, different people have the wrong uh, uh, idea sometimes, but I want to try to clear that up now. The 66 series and the 86 series underneath are basically the same tractor with a couple uh, upgraded modifications. Um, the 86 series is no shorter than the 66 series. That's a pretty common uh, uh, piece of information people get wrong just because the hood looks so much shorter on the 86 series versus the 66 series. Um, basically, when the 86 series came out, they took a 66 series tractor, they moved the seat ahead and the cab forward, and they moved the fuel tank to the rear. So on the 66 series, your fuel tank was about right where your steering wheel is. On these, it's in the back. Um, so it, it's the same if you would park this 986 right aside of a 966 uh, where that the axles lined up, they would be the same exact length. Um, I don't have a 66 series here uh, to <laughs> do a demonstration. Maybe someday um, uh, this uh, tractor collecting is uh, turning into a real problem for me. It is a, uh, I guess you could say it's a disease that's not going to stop. I do want to get a 66 series someday. Not sure what I'd use it for, but I want to get one. So <laughs> anyway, let's get into it with some of the problems uh, that I found with these tractors. All right, guys. So one of the main things that you see advertised when it comes to a 66 or 86 series tractor is the TA is weak or the TA is out. Um, very common, very common in these tractors. And it's not that the TAs were bad. Uh, it's not that they uh, didn't make uh, good parts or anything like that. There is a, uh, a misconception, I think, of how the TA works. And not everybody quite knows how the TA on these tractors was designed to be and how it was meant to work. Um, the TA is not meant to be, and, and for you non-international guys, TA, it's torque amplifier. It's a lever you pull that basically uh, slows you down. Um, to give you a little bit more traction if something goes hard if you're if you're chisel plowing or disking or something and you hit a hard patch you can go to ta and uh, it, it gives you a little bit slower ground speed um, i use it mainly for bailing if i get into a heavy wind row i can pull ta and slow down a little bit um, so the ta is not meant to be a downshift um, let's say you're on the highway and you're going along in uh, fourth high you're rolling right along and a stop sign's coming up and you got some weight on the back and you pull that TA lever to slow you down for the stop sign. Uh, it's one of the worst things that a person can do to the torque amplifier. That's not what it was really designed to be or uh, what it's meant to be used for. It's not a downshift on the highway. It's meant to be in the field under uh, field conditions to uh, just go down a little bit as, you're, as you start pulling hard. Um, a lot of the reason why the TAs are out on these is from uh, people doing that, driving uh, on the road or uh, in road gear and they pull TA and it starts winding down, they use it to downshift and it's it's not really what it's meant to be for. Um, it's not a power shift, it's not something you can just, uh, <laughs> just pull as a downshift and that's what's going to put a lot of wear and tear on these TAs in here. So as far as the cost, if you buy one that has the TA out, um, I will say that splitting these tractors is not as easy as the utility tractors. Um, you can either make a splitting stand or um, see if you can borrow one from your dealer. But if you'll take notice here, these frame rails here um, bolt to this clutch housing here. 
and these frame rails have to come out and you want to leave these bolts in uh, when you split it you just want to loosen them up don't take them out because the rear of the engine here this is your rear of the engine and this is your frame rails these have to stay together when you split it right there when it comes apart um, there's no place under here for a jack um, there's two plates that go on either side with uh, like a frame underneath and an upright to hold the plates and they're adjustable um, if I find a picture of a splitting stand I'll put it on but most guys know so to get at your TA you're gonna have to split it there get your engine away and then there's an A-frame or you can make something on the farm you'll have to take the uh, next uh, transmission that basically take the transmission out of the tractor. It's a very uh, time-consuming thing It's not major like uh, some things can be um, If you've done it quite a few times you can do it But cost wise if you do it yourself um, if you're willing to uh, do all the labor yourself um, a TA is you can spend anywhere from a thousand to two or three thousand dollars Depending on which one you get you can get a heavy-duty one um, there are many options out there. Um, and usually when you do split it, you want to put a new clutch in if it needs a clutch and that kind of stuff. But the TA, and, and the other thing is if the TA is out of it, um, and I want to make this uh, your, you, you'll want to make this your first stop um, when diagnosing a, a TA that's not working or that you think is slipping. Um, behind your battery box on the left side, back in there, so it's called the MCV valve. Um, that is the heart of the hydraulic system on these tractors. That is the uh, brain, the heart, uh, you name it. Um, a lot of times, um, see how this works. You have your TA lever here, and when you pull that, you're pulling a cable. So the cable goes down to the MCV valve, and you're pulling a spool valve. That spool valve is going to go up and down and direct oil to flow in different directions. Um, when you pull it back, it should pull, uh, it's either up or down, I can't remember. Um, but it's going to move that spool in there and direct the oil to go into TA. So a lot of times if that you want to check to see if that spool, first of all that it's connected because I have seen them that the cable wasn't connected to the spool and you were moving the lever and it wasn't doing anything. So that's the first thing, make sure the cable's connected. Second, you want to make sure it's adjusted correctly. Um, there's a little snap ring on top of that uh, spool valve, and when the, it's down, you want that snap ring to just set on the housing of the MCV valve. The other thing is the dump valve. You'll take notice when you start it up and you push in the clutch, there's a light on the dash, a red light, and that light, it sh everything should be adjusted to the point that when you let out the clutch, just as the tractor starts to move, that red light should go out. There's a rod down here. Let's see if I can't point that out. Right there. It's a threaded rod, and you adjust that in or out um, to adjust uh, to make that light go out at the right time. That's the dump valve that'll dump oil, um, and that'll affect the TA. Uh, it'll definitely affect the TA if it's not quite right. Um, so that's another thing to check out for to make sure all the adjustments are right. So um, basically if everything's adjusted right and the way it should be and your TA still doesn't work, I would say you want to go and uh, pull your MCV valve off. Um, pull that off the side. If I ever have to do it on this, I'll do a video. You take that off and there is a hydraulic gear pump on the back side of that MCV valve that bolts fast with uh, I believe it's three or four bolts. Um, Another common thing that happens with that is you see that gear that rides on that hydraulic pump to power it. Um, it's not a tapered shaft or anything. It's a keyed, it's a keyway and a keyed gear. And then it has a nut to hold it on the shaft. And it's like a, a nylon type of lock nut. What happens is that nut works its way off and the gear can get loose and it's even fallen off in these tractors. Um, so check that. And when you go to reassemble, put Loctite on that. Uh, not <laughs> don't rely on the, the nylon to lock it so that's another issue um, all this stuff is online as far as the MCV valve the parts break down to tear it down there's probably 50 o-rings in there and seals um, it's re a real good idea to clean it out and to make sure everything works now that's going to be the same 
from the pretty well the same <coughs> there might have been a few modifications from the first series tractor to have an mcv valve like the 706 all the way up to the 1586 that valve has had very few changes through all those years all those series so um, i could probably just do a video talking about the ta but uh, we'll move on here all right so let's talk about the engine now i'm going to be uh, completely honest with these engines here these international engines and in some of these tractors I have uh, overhauled some of these over the years these engines are awesome <laughs> and I, I'm not saying that just because I like international if, if another company makes an engine that's good I will say it's awesome too these engines tend to be bulletproof <laughs> the the sleeves on these uh, in the block for the pistons the sleeves on this tractor are so heavy and so rigid and there's so much meat on those sleeves um, i've had many of these engines apart already they are solid they're strong um, these tractors were advertised for uh what was the the advertisement hard pull lugability um they hit the nail right on the head with that type of advertising these engines are real good um a lot of guys have a hard time getting rid of these older tractors, the 66 or 86 series, because when they need them, they'll start and they just keep on running. They're just a solid engine. Um, I do like Cummins. Cummins is a good engine. Um, but when you set it next to the international uh, engines, these tended to have a few less issues than the Cummins. The Cummins had a lot of front and rear engine seal problems. Um, these, not so much. Uh, so what makes these engines so good? Like I said, the um, seal or the the sleeves for the pistons are solid. They're heavy duty. There's three grooves for the O-rings on, um, so you have uh, a little insurance on a, on anything leaking. Um, two giant fuel filters for the fuel system. These pumps uh, can be hit or miss uh, as far as the pumps. These uh, our Bosch, Bosch is top of the line as far as I'm concerned, as far as injection pumps. Bosch is a real good pump. Um, I've seen tractors that have very many hours on with the original injection pump, and I think a lot of that has to do again with your fuel filters, keeping clean fuel in it, uh, changing your fuel filters. Um, but it's still a good system. It's a great setup. If you have to change your injection pump, it's very easy. It's, it's not major. Everything on this engine to work on is fairly easy too. There's not much that you have to, you take this hood off and everything is out of your way. It's right there. It, it's about waist high. <laughs> I mean, you can't get anything better to work on uh, as far as an engine. It's right there. You take the hood off and, and you basically have an engine in a frame. So um, easy to work on. Very few issues. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Let's go around to the other side. And I apologize for doing this at night. I should have waited till the sun came up. But um, one thing I will say, and uh, it's not as common of a problem, but these oil coolers here. Now this oil cooler on these engines is a huge step up from the 56 series um, and all the piping and plumbing that was on those tractors. Um, but I have seen it already that these will maybe sometimes give problems uh, as far as leaking here with the O-rings. Um, have seen engine oil in a radiator already or vice versa because these have failed. Um, these aren't too hard to change. Uh, they are a little bit expensive, but again, I've seen tractors with very many hours on them. Um, the other thing is I like the oil filters. Your oil filters are mounted right here. Uh, they're easily accessible. They're out in the open. You don't have to take anything off to get to them. They're mounted upside down. So if it's been sitting a while, you don't have oil running. Um, I used to hate changing oil in the Ford uh, 6610 when it was right on sideways and you take it off and all the oil runs down the engine. Um, that's nice. Um, one thing I will say that's a pain on this if you have to do a starter. It was way easier to do a starter on a 66 series versus the 86 series. The 86 series starter is under the floorboard in the cab. You have to take all those bolts out of your floor plate and you need a, a pretty fancy <laughs> uh, socket and extension rig. You need some uh, flexible sockets and uh, it, it's not easy. You're standing on your head. It is kind of difficult to get a starter out of these tractors and it weighs a ton once you do get it out. So 
that's one thing to maybe think about, look for. Um, if you do have to do a starter, you're gonna be standing on your head. Make sure you have some wobble sockets and all that kind of stuff. But you go back to the 66 series and it's not a big deal. Um, the only thing is why I like the 86 series a little bit too. Over the 66 series was your fuel tank. Um, it not only was back here, but it came up and over the top of your valve cover. And it's not as easy to work on those engines. They're not as accessible as this with that fuel tank there. Um, but the 66 series is still a great tractor. So um, now cost wise, there's so many of these tractors out there and there's so many companies making aftermarket parts for these tractors. Um, we have also gone a different route. Uh, somebody didn't want it overhauled, we would put a reman engine in. And a reman engine, I don't know, you might be talking 4,500, 5,000 bucks. It might be more now, that was pretty many years ago. But um, reman might be the way to go too if you do need an engine. Um, I'm trying to think, as far as the fuel system, we didn't really have to do much with injectors or anything like that. Um, a couple times we did, we had might have had a bad seal, like the brass ring. But the injectors are pretty good on these tractors too. So uh, let's see what else would be a common thing. All right, guys, this video is getting a little bit long. We're going to have to go into part two tomorrow. Uh, I apologize. I can't upload videos much longer than 15 minutes or they won't upload. So we're going to have to take this into part two. So stay tuned tomorrow. I'll get into some more of the uh, issues with these tractors.